This lecture is over the digestive system. Again, this is the first chapter of the digestive system. Remember, this is the only system that we have in this course that will actually split into two chapters. So we're starting with the first chapter this week. In your textbooks, starting with the first chapter of the digestive system, there's a great introductory system or introduction uh, to the system that I want you to be able to read. I'm not going to read through everything for you. We're going to hit the high points of the chapter in these lectures so that we can keep them short and sweet. They can only be up to max 15 minutes long. So any lecture throughout the rest of the semester can only be 15 minutes long because then I get cut off. So again, we don't hit anatomy and physiology really hard in medical terminology. We really are here for the language and the terms. And this is our first real body system that we've had so far. So when we talk about the digestive system, uh, there's a paragraph here that says the digestive or gastrointestinal tract, you might hear it, you know, called, called that as well, begins with the mouth where your food enters and ends with the anus where the solid waste material leaves your body. The four functions of that system then are ingestion, digestion, absorption, and elimination. So become familiar with those four terms here. I want you to turn to the next page where it says the pharynx. They start going through the anatomy and physiology. So we start with the oral cavity and go through the teeth. Um, we go to the pharynx. And there's a bold term here under pharynx. And as you can, you can follow along with me in the chapter as we go through this lecture. There's a, a bold term called deglutition. Okay, say that out loud, deglutition. It says in the sentence here, when swallowing or deglutition occurs, a cartilaginous flap of tissue, which is called our epiglottis, covers that trachea so our food cannot enter and become lodged there in the wrong in the wrong tube. Sometimes we hear that, oh, it went down the wrong tube. So swallowing is the definition of deglutition. I think it's a term we probably haven't come across before, so I wanted to point that out. Another term is on the next page under esophagus. The bold term here that I have circled or highlighted in my text is peristalsis. It says peristalsis is the involuntary, progressive, rhythmic contraction of muscles in the wall of the esophagus propelling a bolus or a plug of food down towards the stomach. So peristalsis is another term we might not have come across yet before and I want to make sure you understand and can say that. If you keep turning the page, there really is figure 5-12 here says pathway of food through the gastrointestinal tract. And it's all just kind of little rectangle boxes here, but that really is our pathway there where we start with the mouth and end through the anus. Next, we're at vocabulary. There's a pretty large section here, two full pages, and uh, plus actually there's almost three full pages of yellow vocab terms. In a face-to-face -face class, we would take terms and go through, or take turns, excuse me, and go through all of these terms. I'm going to say them out loud for you so that you can hear how some of these words are pronunciated. It's really important if you want to pause me, say the words with me as we go. That can really help you. What's as important um, this semester is that you learn the language, is that you can also speak it Okay, so we have absorption, amino acids, amylase, anus, appendix, bile, bilirubin, bowel, canine teeth, cecum, colon, common bile duct, defecation, deglutition, we had that one before, dentin, digestion, duodenum, some people say duodenum, either one is fine, elimination, emulsification, enamel, enzyme, esophagus, fatty acids, 
feces, gallbladder, and look at the little, it kind of looked like a, a star here with gallbladder. It says, hint, gallbladder is one word. Make sure you always, always, always write or type or print gallbladder as all one word. Okay. Moving on, glucose, glycogen, hydrochloric acid, ileum, incisor, insulin, jejunum, lipase, liver, lower esophageal sphincter, mastication. Mastication is chewing, another term. Okay, maybe we haven't come across before. Molar teeth, palate, pancreas, papillae, notice the A, E, papillae is how you say that. In singular, it says papilla, okay? Parotid gland, turning the page, peristalsis, pharynx, portal vein, protease, pulp, pyloric sphincter, pylorus, rectum, rugae, saliva, salivary glands, sigmoid colon, sphincter, stomach, triglycerides, uvula, and villi. And you see the singular there is a villus, okay, with a U-S. So that brings us to the most important part. Um, if you look at the image here on the screen, I have focus. The focus and the real depth of what we're going to learn here comes from these blue boxes, okay? So terminology. It says, write the meaning of the medical term in the space provided. You can fill this in. I encourage you and advise you to do that. It's great to use for practice. We have combining forms here. So on the first page, we have ano, appendo, appendigo, buco, seco, and cilio. So ano means anus, and the term that they use right away is perianal. Okay. Appendo would be the appendix. Okay, they use it in a term, appendectomy. Appendicle also means appendix, and they use appendicitis. Now, a lot of students say, well, how do I know whether to use appendo or appendico when there's more than one combining form? How do I know what to use? Okay, and what I say is the easiest is that, first of all, remember, we're not making up words. So either it's in the medical dictionary or it isn't, right? We don't say appendicoitis, okay? We drop that O, right? And we also uh, don't say appendicitis. We, we say appendicitis, right? So appendicitis technically has a definition, right? Inflammation of the appendix, but you won't find appendicitis in the medical dictionary. It's not a word. Does that make sense? So how do I know, students say, how do I know which one to use and, and with which suffixes? How do I know? Okay, how do I know how to build that term? I use the small um, little book that we have that comes along with your, with your textbook. Um, it's not required in all classes. Um, I try to require it because we do use it in lots of other classes as well. Um, but depending on the section and, and the faculty that teaches, you, you might not have this small book. But in the small translator, it's called the Instant Translator book, you will find, if you look for uh, combining forms and you look for suffixes, if you look at appendo and appendico, you'll see where it says use with itis or use with ectomy, okay? That can really help you. So take time a minute here, if you have that instant translator, to look it up and see what I'm talking about. It can really help you, okay? Um, if you turn the page, we have kilo, okay? That's how you say that, kilosis. Kilo means lip. Cholecysto for gallbladder, cholidoco for the common bile duct. That's one that really gets uh, missed. You really need to make sure you study that one good. Colo for colon, colono for colon, dent e for tooth with an with an i. Not many of them. Only maybe a handful don't have that um, combining vowel of o. They have i. There's one of them. Duodeno, entero. 
And then on to the next page at the top, I like to read, make sure you uh, pay attention to 5-16, the types of anastomoses, okay, anastomosis, I-S is singular, anastomoses is plural, and you can see there um, the anastomoses and, and the examples of those. If you keep turning the page, we have esophago, facio, gastro, gingivo, glosso, hepato, ilio, jejuno, labio, lapero, lingual, mandibulo, odonto, oral, palato, pancreato, peritoneo, pharyngeo, procto, pyloro, recto, sialadeno, that's kind of a funny one, sialadeno, sigmoido, stomato, uvulo, and then we go into substances, amylo, bili, bilirubino, and coli, Cholehydro, gluco, glyco, glycogeno, lipo, litho, proteo, pio, silo, steato. And then we have a few suffixes, ace, kesia, iasis, prandial. And I want you to write this one in, ectasis. So hyphen, e, c, t. A S I S. Ectasis is another one here that we should write in. When we get to pathology of the digestive system, signs and symptoms here, these are good. Make sure you follow through with anorexia. It is the lack of appetite, but read that paragraph underneath there. Ascites. Ascites is a term that we don't hear very often. It's the abnormal accumulation of fluid in the abdomen. Read about ascites. There's a picture there of ascites on a male patient. The next term is kind of fun to say, um, maybe a little difficult to say, borborygami, and it says so singular is borborygamous. Borborygamous and borborygami. This is the rumbling or gurgling noises that's produced by the movement of gas and fluid or both in our stomachs or in our gastrointestinal tract. It's bowel sounds, borborygamous, okay? We all have it. Constipation is talked about as well. If you turn the page, diarrhea, dysphagia, uh, eructation, flatus, hematochesia, jaundice, and the word in parentheses behind it is what we really see a little bit more is icterus. Icterus is another word for jaundice or having that yellow orange color to our skin because of issues with bilirubin um, in the blood and in our liver. Melena, nausea, steatorrhea, then we have pathologic conditions here that you can read about for the oral cavity, pathologic conditions of the upper gastrointestinal tract, the lower gastrointestinal tract. Um, if you turn and look at inflammatory bowel disease, there's a YouTube video here for that um, that you can click on in the content. And there was also a YouTube video, I forgot to talk about it, um, for colon resection. When we went through the blue boxes, colon resection was kind of mentioned. And there's a YouTube video for you to watch on those too. Just kind of helps you understand those a little bit better. Um, and then we go through the rest of the issues here, the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas, and the pathologic uh, conditions here that go along with that. They talk about pancreatic cancer, pancreatitis, hepatitis, and then you're at the end of the chapter. So make sure that you know what you're doing when you get your homework uh, worksheet going. Um, any exercises at the end of the chapter are for you to do because the answers are there for you. So it can really help you when we're talking about test preparation.